Before 1983, the only four-wheel drive vehicles in the Ford lineup were full-size F-Series pickups and Broncos. They featured a rugged, dependable, part-time four-wheel drive system that was built to get the tough jobs done off-road. And we sold a lot of them. We still do. But now, just a few years later, a dramatic revolution has taken place. There are currently four different four-wheel and all-wheel drive systems in the Ford lineup, covering six different nameplates, car and truck. This reflects a similar trend in the industry itself. There are now dozens of different vehicles on the market capable of powering all four wheels. And they aren't just off-road work trucks anymore. Increasingly, more sophisticated and convenient technology has extended the all-weather traction of four-wheel drive to a very wide range of buyers. And Ford offers one of the widest ranges of four-wheel and all-wheel drive systems available. To take advantage of this opportunity, you have to understand why people buy these vehicles and how to demonstrate them simply but effectively. Whether for work, play, or all-purpose use, what people want in a four-wheel or all-wheel drive vehicle is greater security and versatility. Perhaps because of some special work or recreational pursuit, or because of where and when they pursue it. Part of the benefit of owning a traditional four-wheel drive vehicle is that it can quite literally open up all new territory beyond where the pavement ends. That might mean a backcountry cabin or a special hunting or fishing spot. Of course, for many people, the fun of four-wheeling is an end in itself. But the tremendous activity in four-wheel drive sales suggests that something else is also going on. Taking their cue from the traditional go-anywhere, anytime four-wheel drive enthusiasts, all sorts of people who never planned to head to the wilderness have discovered that four-wheel drive can also help them get through to the grocery store, to a Cub Scout meeting, or just about anywhere. In many parts of the country, there are times of the year when you don't have to go very far to get into a serious battle with the elements. That's particularly true as more and more people move further out into the suburbs and the country. For many of them, the ideal family or commuting vehicle is one that either manually or automatically can adjust its drive technology to meet sudden weather changes. So as a result of both changing technology and changing lifestyles, the demographics of today's four-wheel and all-wheel drive buyers are all over the chart. That explains why there's such a versatile range of four-by-fours by Ford. What's not so obvious is that the different four-wheel and all-wheel drive systems featured in these vehicles also provide a wide range of functional versatility. We still offer the rugged and traditional part-time system on both full-size and compact trucks. And now with many vehicles, the system is available with optional manual front hubs or standard automatic front hubs. Part-time is often preferred by expert drivers because it does exactly and only what the driver makes it do. The next step up in technical sophistication is touch drive. Optional on Bronco and standard on Bronco 2 and Ranger 4x4s. It's a fully functional four-wheel drive system that's more convenient to use with push-button controls for the driver. The all-wheel drive Topaz and Tempo models feature an on-demand, on-the-road-only system. These models do not have the ground clearance or skid plate protection offered on traditional 4x4 systems. Once activated by the driver, the all-wheel drive system sends power to all four wheels for better traction. And Ford's newest system, electronic four-wheel drive, is one of the most sophisticated four-wheel drive systems on the market. Available on Aerostar, it's a full-time system, completely controlled by a microprocessor. And it requires no driver input at all. It's always on, always optimizing traction to all four wheels, regardless of road conditions or weather. To effectively operate and sell these systems, you need to understand in simple terms how each works, its advantages and limitations, and how it compares with competitive designs. So we'll take a closer look at each system, one at a time. In the remainder of part one of the program, 
We'll talk about the part-time and touch drive systems found on Ford Tough Trucks and their benefits. In part two, you'll learn about all-wheel drive and electronic four-wheel drive. You can view any of the individual segments separately if you need information about a particular system. But it's suggested that you watch them all in sequence, since each builds on the knowledge presented in the preceding segments. So if you're ready, let's go learn about four-wheeling. Part-time four-wheel drive is the system most experienced truck buyers are referring to when they use the term 4x4. Four four. In fact, for most of the history of four-wheeling, it was the only meaning of the term. Despite the advent of new technology, part-time is still very popular. Significantly, it's also the system used by many off-road competition drivers. That's because part-time four-wheel drive offers the ultimate in driver control. And over decades of use, it has proven itself capable of handling some of the toughest tasks that can be asked of a truck. But while part-time is rugged and efficient, the fact that it is also a completely manual system means that you have to understand how the system works if you want to get the most out of it. The heart of any four-wheel drive system is the transfer case, which is a second gearbox positioned behind the transmission. The reason this system is called part-time four-wheel drive is that it is not always operating in a four-wheel drive mode. The transfer case can direct power to either the rear wheels or to all four wheels on driver demand. The transfer case gears are manually selected using a shift lever in the cab. When the selector is set to the too high position, the transfer case takes engine power from the output shaft of the transmission and sends it straight through to the rear axle, just like a conventional truck. Too high means two-wheel drive, high range, and it's the position you would use for normal speed highway driving. If driving conditions on or off-road require more traction, the driver shifts the transfer case into four high. The vehicle can continue driving at normal speeds and power is still sent to the rear wheels. But now, the transfer case sends power to its front output shaft as well. From here, the power travels to the front axle, and the engine is now turning all four wheels. Four low sends power to front and rear wheels the same way as four high. But instead of a one-to-one -one gear ratio, four low includes a gear reduction ratio of 2.61 to one. Just like low gear in the transmission, this allows the engine to operate at higher RPMs for more power. Although the vehicle travels at a much slower speed, the low gear greatly multiplies the torque, or turning effort, sent to all four wheels. Four low is normally only used off-road in deep mud or snow, where high load conditions and low speeds could cause the engine to stall or lug with the normal transmission gear ratios. Because of the gear reduction, the transfer case could be damaged if the driver accidentally shifted into four low while the vehicle is moving. To help prevent this, the driver can only select four low by first shifting over and through an offset neutral position. In neutral, all power is disconnected from both drive shafts, even if the engine is on and the transmission is in gear. Neutral is the position to use when the vehicle is being towed which incidentally does not require disconnecting the drive shafts on Ford's part-time system. That's really all there is to the transfer case. But the system also needs a way to disconnect the front wheels from the axle when in two-wheel drive. Otherwise, the wheels would force all the front drive components to turn unnecessarily, resulting in lower fuel economy. Ford offers two ways to disconnect the front axle from the front wheels, manual hubs, and auto hubs. With manual hubs, before going into four high or four low, the driver simply turns them to the lock position by hand. Now, with the wheels solidly connected to the front axles, the hubs can be left locked to permit shifting into and out of four high on the fly while the vehicle is moving. But again, for the best highway fuel economy, the hubs should be turned back to the free running position 
for extended two-wheel drive operation. The manual hub system is simple and reliable, which is why it's preferred by many experienced drivers. On the other hand, automatic hubs, which are now standard on most part-time Ford systems, have an overriding clutch, which automatically locks axles and wheels together whenever power is sent to the front drive shafts. To make the hubs run free on the highway again, just stop, shift into too high, and reverse direction for about 10 feet to disengage the hub clutches. This is important to mention when demonstrating this system. Of course, there's much more to a tough four-wheeler than just the drive system. Most Ford part-time 4x4s feature the patented twin traction beam independent front suspension, for example. 4x4s generally have a higher ground clearance than two-wheel drive trucks, and many incorporate skid plates to protect the transfer case and fuel tank from off-road hazards. Depending upon application, a 4x4 may also require more aggressive tires for snow or off-road running, or limited slip front and rear differentials. But fundamentally, all Ford part-time systems work the same way. So, now that you're familiar with the major components of the system, let's put it all together and demonstrate how to operate a part-time 4x4 by Ford. And there's one other caution to make before we start. Since the powertrain is completely disconnected from the wheels when the transfer case is shifted into neutral, be sure to always engage the parking brake. Now, let's head out. The first thing to point out is that you should never operate a part-time system in four-wheel drive while on dry pavement. There's no center differential in the part-time transfer case to allow a speed difference between front and rear axles that would occur, say, when going around a curve. Now, that's not a problem when you're off-road or running in snow, because the slight speed difference is absorbed by the front and rear axle differentials through normal wheel slip action. But on dry pavement, the wheels can't slip to release the stress. This can cause a condition called transfer case wind-up, which can seriously damage powertrain components. Here on the highway, the transfer case is in too high, and we're powering with just the rear wheels. Incidentally, while Ford's too high shift position is full forward and out of the way, GM's too high position is rearward and more obstructive to occupants of the cab. Now, Let's turn down this dirt road. Oh, it looks like nasty stuff. Time to go into four-wheel drive. With manual hubs, before taking on this situation, I'd first have to get out and turn the hubs to lock. But as you recall, we already did that a few moments ago. So we're ready to go. If this truck were equipped with the standard automatic locking front hubs, we wouldn't have to get out at all to turn the hubs. They're automatically engaged when you initially shift the transfer case into four high. With either kind of hub, once locked, you can shift the transfer case between two and four high without stopping. You can definitely feel the shifter hit the stop. But just to be sure, when the system is fully engaged in four high, a dash light comes on to confirm it. Now, we can proceed in four-wheel drive with improved traction. A two-wheel drive vehicle might bog down in conditions like this. Of course, you still have to use good driving sense and avoid becoming overconfident. The increased traction of four-wheel drive will get the vehicle moving on slippery surfaces better than a two-wheel drive truck, but it won't stop any better. Even a rugged 4x4 can meet its match. But when the going really gets tough, before the engine starts to labor, you have a secret weapon, four low. Remember, because of the gear reduction, to avoid grinding the gears, you must be stopped to shift into four low. And you won't be able to go very fast when you drive off again. But now, you're really putting the engine power to work to get you through deep mud or snow, or up and down steep hills off-road.
And that's really about all there is to demonstrating Ford's proven part-time four-wheel drive system. While it takes a little practice, part-time has a lot going for it, including greater versatility than Chevy's system, which does not offer a manual hub option. In addition to explaining the features, maintenance, and warranty information you normally cover when delivering a truck, you should also make certain to explain these points about part-time four-wheel drive. First, buyers should be cautioned never to operate in either four high or four low while on dry pavement, because this will result in increased tire wear, possible drivetrain damage, poor vehicle handling during cornering, and a low, raspy, or growling noise from the transfer case. Second, they should know never to shift into or out of four low while the vehicle is moving. Third, manual hubs must be locked by the driver before shifting into four-wheel drive and should be unlocked for optimized fuel economy while in two-wheel drive for extended periods. In either case, both hubs must be in the same position. With auto hubs, the vehicle direction must be reversed for about 10 feet in too high to disengage them. Finally, make sure you show customers the owner guide and four-wheeling with Ford supplement, where four-wheel drive is explained. You now understand part-time four-wheel drive, which is the foundation to all the other four-wheel drive systems in the Ford lineup. So don't stop here. Build on that knowledge in other segments of this program. Ford's Touch Drive Electric Shift four-wheel drive system, which is standard on Ranger and Bronco 2 4x4s and optional on Bronco is really another variation of part-time four-wheel drive. That is, on driver demand, a transfer case sends engine power either to the rear wheels or all four wheels, with a choice of either four high or four low gear ratios. Touch drive also incorporates automatic locking front hubs as standard equipment, so the driver doesn't have to leave the cab to turn the hubs over to the locked position. But there are some important differences. Most importantly, touch drive has no transfer case shift lever. The driver selects the transfer case mode by pressing control buttons on the instrument panel. The control energizes an electric motor, which makes the transfer case shift from too high to four high or four high to four low, while a magnetic clutch causes the front drive system to spin up to vehicle speed and engage the automatic hubs. The electric shift and magnetic clutch are Ford industry firsts, and they have practical advantages you should point out in a demonstration drive. One of Ford's advantages is particularly important if your prospect has looked at Chevy's Instatrack system. Both systems permit the driver to shift into or out of four-wheel drive on the fly while the vehicle is running. But while this is accomplished with the press of a button on Ford's touch drive, Chevy Instatrack has a traditional mechanical shifter, which takes up legroom in the cab. Touch drive also incorporates an electrical interlock, which prevents accidentally shifting into or out of four low while the vehicle is moving. A flashing low-range light on the control warns the driver that the system cannot make the shift until proper conditions are met. That is, the vehicle must be stopped with the automatic transmission in neutral or the manual transmission clutch depressed. Then, the system makes the shift. When it's time to go back to civilization with touch drive, you just hit the 4x4 or low-range button again until all the indicator lights go off. That causes the transfer case to shift back into two-wheel drive. Then, just back up for 10 feet or so to disengage the automatic hubs. And all front drive components are disconnected to maximize highway fuel efficiency.
the bottom line is that Ford Touch Drive really provides the best of both worlds. In terms of convenience, it's almost as easy to operate as a conventional passenger car. Yet it provides the same rugged, all-terrain capability and driver control as a traditional part-time four-wheel drive shift system. Touch Drive may be a perfect solution for drivers who frequently encounter marginal weather. But there are some cautions to point out, however. First, vehicles equipped with touch drive can be towed for service up to 50 miles and at 35 miles per hour with the transmission in neutral. But unlike Ford's part-time system, touch drive vehicles do not have a transfer case neutral position, so they cannot be towed in excess of those limits, behind an RV, for example without first disconnecting the drive shafts. Second, touch drive owners must observe the same basic cautions as other four-wheelers. Again, you should emphasize that while four-wheel drive may get a vehicle moving better than a two-wheeler in slippery conditions, it won't stop any better. And it's still possible to lose control by driving too fast on slick surfaces. To summarize touch drive, here are some additional points to cover when delivering a touch drive vehicle to a new owner. First, as with other part-time systems, to avoid increased wear, drivetrain damage, poor vehicle handling during cornering, and transfer case noise, owners should never operate touch drive in a four-wheel drive mode when on dry pavement. Second, owners should understand that the safety interlock will prevent the transfer case from shifting into or out of low range while the vehicle is moving or in gear. Third, the direction of the vehicle must be reversed for 10 feet or so to disengage the automatic hubs when going back into two-wheel drive. Finally, make sure you show your customers the owner guide and four-wheeling with Ford supplement where four-wheel drive is explained. And that's really all there is to the system. Touch drive is an exceptionally convenient, easy to use, full function four-wheel drive system. And there's no question that with prudent operation, it can give drivers added advantages in difficult weather and terrain. Now, you're ready to take a look at Ford's on-the-road four-wheel and all-wheel drive systems.